In many games, we need to know player input position, so where player has clicked or touched on the screen. In this video, we will discuss how we would get this information. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studios Tutorials. In this tutorial, we will talk about difference between screen space and world space, difference between camera in orthographic mode and perspective mode, and how does it all influence the way we access player input position? So first, let's talk about screen space and world space. So uh, screen space is defined in pixel values. So the bottom left corner of the screen is 0 0.00 and the right top is the pixel width, pixel height. So basically the resolution of your monitor. You could treat it as our screen where UI usually resides. Our user input comes from screen space, so whether it is mouse or touch, it is all in pixel values, the coordinates. On the other hand, our game objects resides in the world space. So every coordinate you set in the Unity editor is in the world space. Because of that, we need some kind of conversion between screen space and world space to get our input into our game. So that's one issue we need to tackle. Another one is the camera. So as you might know, camera can be in two modes, the perspective mode and the orthographic mode. Orthographic mode is great for simple 2D games and allows us to use a simpler way of accessing the input position. In perspective mode, we have to cast a ray in the direction of our object to get its, uh, to get its coordinates. As you might already know, recasting is physics feature, meaning it is more computationally intensive. Now, knowing all of that, let's go into code. Again, we are using Kenny assets, I recommend you check them out. Our preset in Unity is pretty simple, it's again the same thing that we have used in our 2D tutorial. And we have ground, we have obstacle, weave, box collider and rigid body an NPC with nothing more than just a sprite. So we will start with the camera in perspective mode and I will show you a general method for getting input from the player. Let's create a script called player input. Let's open it up. Our goal is to move our NPC to the point where we clicked. First of all, we will declare a field called uh, a public field of type layer mask. Let's call it obstacle mask. Now we will define a method, and this method will get the mouse position in world coordinates. So we will call it get mouse position in world coordinates, and it will return a vector three with question mark. It will be a private method. As you might recall, vector 3 with question mark can be a null value. Okay, let's create a ray. Let's call, call it ray. And it will be camera.main.screen.ray. And we will give it input.mouse position. If you are creating this for touch input, you could use input.getTouched0 and you would get an input from the touch screen. We will be using mouse for this example. So let's look at the documentation. Our screen points to ray. It returns a ray going from the camera through a screen point. Now you might have previously came across a screen to world point. And if you use this function in orthographic mode, it's all good and well. If you use it with perspective mode, you will get a situation where you have the same point returned to you always and your object stays in one point and doesn't move. So first of all, let's debug.drawRay and we'll see how it works. So let's call debug draw ray and we'll draw it with ray origin, ray direction multiplied by 10 and color, color yellow. Okay, and we have to return something. Let's return a null. Okay, and in update, we will check if the button of mouse is pressed. So if input.getMouseButton and zero. 
and in the if statement we will call our function. Okay, let's go to Unity. Let's uh, drag our script to our NPC. Let's choose our obstacle mask to obstacle. If you don't have the obstacle mask layer, uh, you, uh, we have our obstacle object with the layer obstacle assigned to it. Okay, let's now play. And if you click on our screen in the scene view, you will see our ray. And it is drawn exactly when we are holding our button and we are moving around the screen. Great. Now we need to return our point of intersection between our ray and our ground plane. To do that, we need to create a ray cast hit to the array called hits. It will only have one value. So we gave it only one space. And here we will call if statement and physics to the dot get ray intersection non alloc. So non alloc function it doesn't allocate memory for our hits. That's that way we can pass it a hit array with a certain number of hits that we are expecting to get, and it only allocates that many hits and finishes the function if the array is full. So we will pass it a ray and a hits. And this method returns an integer value. So we will only check if this integer is greater than zero, meaning that we have retrieved a value. And we need only also to check our obstacle mask. If our obstacle mask uh, isn't uh, the layer that our game object is on. So did we hit our obstacle? So we call and and obstacle mask dot value to get the layer value and we need to check if it is different than uh, open uh, brackets and one bit shift to the left and hits zero lighter game object layer uh, this is because our Obstacle mask stores uh, layer ma uh, layer value as a, a bit value, and our game object stores layer as an integer. That's why we need to convert it into bits to check uh, both values for equality. Okay, so here we know we have retrieved a value at, and it isn't on a, an obstacle layer, so we can return a bits zero dot point. Okay, great. And now we need to call it somewhere. So we previously had a code in the update. So we'll now call input dot get the mouse button down zero, and we'll assign it our position equals our function. And we need to check if our position isn't equal to null. And if it isn't, well, now we'll create another helper method, a private uh, method or move to position that takes vector three position. It returns void. So in this method, we'll just move our NPC. So transform that position equals position. Okay, great. And we will call it here. Move to position and position. And we need to call position value because we have vector three with question mark. Okay, now will it work? Let's go to Unity and find out. So let's go to our Unity project where NPC has the script, has obstacle mask already assigned to it. Save it, let's run it. And despite our breakers seem to be working, we have no change at all. And why is that? This is because our ground plane doesn't have a collider and physics 2D of course checks for a collider. So we need to create a box collider 2D here. Let's make it a little bigger. Okay, and we need we will check our obstacle to be a trigger so it doesn't move. Okay, let's save it and let's run the game. 
And now we should be able to move around when we click, but not where the obstacle is. So a success. We are able to access the point. Okay, so what about orthographic camera? Because remember we were using perspective. Let's switch to orthographic. Does it still work? Well, yes, it does, because it is a universal method that works with every type of camera mode. Okay, great. Okay, so now let's look at a simpler method that can only be used with orthographic camera. So let's call private vector3, and we will continue with question marks so the rest of the code works, but you could easily use vector3 for an output. And we will call it get mouse position with orthographic camera. Okay, and here we will call var mouse input equals input dot mouse position. So again, you could just use here input dot get touch for a touch input. Okay, now we will convert this input mouse position from screen space to world space. So var mouse position, it will be equal to camera main. And one thing I haven't mentioned it, that you have to have your camera tagged as main camera, else it will, it will not work. So make sure you have your camera marked as ta tagged as main camera. It is by default marked like this, but you have another camera, you must you might want to use this other camera. Okay, we will call screen to world world point, and we will give it our mouse input. Now we want to make mouse input Z position as zero, as we have our position at a camera Z position. Okay, let's return mouse position. And because we are returning vector through three with question mark, we can just switch those methods. Okay, let's go to Unity, let's play. And now we can see we can put anywhere we want our NPC, even on the obstacle, it doesn't care. And it doesn't care about the collider either. Okay, so last thing, let's check what happens on the perspective camera. We have our perspective camera, we press play, and it doesn't really work. And that is the reason why we only can use this method with orthographic camera. Okay, great, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have enjoyed it, please like it, please subscribe, and if you feel like it, please support me on Patreon. Thanks again, goodbye.